Over the years, the City of Cambridge has received a number of national awards that have highlighted local quality of life issues. The Electrical Department has just embarked on the City's newest initiative to help residents see Cambridge in a new light. They have begun to implement major improvements to the existing street lighting system. Let's take a look at this clip and then we'll come right back to hear Steve Lankowskis, the head of the Electrical Department, tell us all about it. The Cambridge Electrical Department is responsible for maintaining and installing all of the electrical equipment and devices for city properties. We're all used to seeing their trucks around the city as they respond to more than 1,500 calls each year. The newest initiative for the department has been a project that will make major improvements to the quality of life for city residents. The citywide changeover to LED street lighting is an initiative that was heralded by the city manager earlier this season on City View Inside. So we're going to go and we're going to put new fixtures, LED fixtures, which can serve energy on all our street lights. You know, we hope to cut our budget substantially, maybe by somewhere between 40 and 60 percent, and uh, also have the ability to make some areas brighter and some areas more dim. You know, not everybody wants to see all this light. I think the, the way that LED street lights work, it's, it's much more of a cone kind of down mm -hmm. rather than flaring out everywhere. So I, I think it's, again, great project, great energy saver, and uh, the city's into it right now, and we hope to complete it in even a shorter period of time than we originally thought. While there will be many benefits from the LED installation, safety, comfort, and cost savings, the project will also add to the overall beauty of our city. Well, Steve, thanks so much for joining me. I'm happy to have you on the show and learn some more about these new LED lights. It's a pretty exciting initiative, huh? It is, it's very exciting. So how did this project get started? Uh, it actually has gone on for quite a few years. You know, mm -hmm. my predecessor, George Fernandez, you know, they did a lot of research with testing fixtures in different areas. Mm -hmm. uh, we went through many, many pilot programs okay. uh, going back two or three years. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one on Inman Street now between uh, Mass Ave and Broadway. That's been there for just about two years. Okay. Um, and it's worked out very well. Uh, that was some of the early on pilots. And then we did smaller pilots in and around the city as we progressed um, you know, as we got closer to the installation, we did a, um, a pilot program in the uh, Bishop Allen Drive area with Temple Street. Okay. Um, and also down in East Cambridge. We, we try to spread it out right. in different areas to, you know, get a different perspective from different residents um, and see what we got back, you know, for feedback. And mm -hmm. we got positive feedback, you know, right through all the pilot programs. And the pilot programs also on the, on the, uh, the later end of it, uh, we included the a couple of different control systems. Okay. And uh, that was included in the pilots. Okay. So through these pilots, were you able to narrow down things that we didn't want to use or things that we really wanted to use? Yes. The, uh, I'm, the, the pilot programs, we looked at a couple of different things, the different types of fixtures, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, manufacturers, um, and, and how they were controlled, how they reacted to the dimming, the okay. dimming control system the two different ones that we narrowed it down to. Um, glare, um, and a lot of that glare and the, uh, the light levels work well together. As you brought the light level down, uh, the glare would cut down also. Okay. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. So we've chosen mm. one now that we are using? Yes, yeah. Okay. We have, uh, we've, we've selected uh, a Cree fixture in three different types. Okay. Uh, and the control system we've also uh, selected, and we're well underway. We started back um, the end of June. We're almost five weeks into it now. Mm -hmm. um, on the first phase of the project, we have approximately 4,800 of the Cobra head fixtures that you'll see out there on most residential streets. Right. Um, and we're into it now, about 1,200 fixtures. Okay. And, and, and right now, the control system is not up and running, so they're seeing, you know, the community is seeing a little bit of a brighter light than you would see as soon as the control system's up. When it's up and running, um, initially, it'll drop down to 70% of what they're seeing now. And then beyond that, a, uh, a late night dimming, and we haven't de really determined what time that should be yet. Okay. But it could be around midnight, you know, when people start going to bed or earlier, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we'll cut it down another 35%, so we're not using that energy, right. and you know, when the, the light's not really needed on the, uh, on the streets. Okay. 
So now that you've gotten this project underway, we have finished with the pilots, we're going headstrong. What are some of the feedback that you're getting from the residents? Um, mostly we're getting um, feedback that they're too bright mm -hmm. or they're, it's a white light. Okay. But um, if, if you look back uh, in the early 80s, the whole city was a white light. It was a mercury vapor light. Oh, really? And, and back at that time, the city decided because of uh, energy savings, move into a high pressure sodium, which is like a really yellow light. So they went from a really white, white mercury vapor light mm -hmm. down to a, like an orange, yeah, that yellow warmer light. light. And, um, and now we're going back. So we're going full circle. All right. Yes, <laughs> yeah. but with a little more control and a lot more savings. Mm -hmm. Okay. So speaking of the savings, there mm -hmm. is a lot of benefits to having these lights in the city. One of them is the savings. Mm -hmm. So we're not only saving, you know, money in putting these in, we're saving energy, right? Yeah, we, um, for that, for the Cobra head fixtures, we, um, on a yearly basis, we're over 4 million kilowatt hours. And with the, um, with the fixtures out there running at 100%, um, we're dropping that down to just over 2 million kilowatt hours. So we're, we're cutting our energy use in half. That's pretty good. Before we even consider the, uh, the late night dimming and the 70% um, of startup, which is, we're not really sure yet because we need to get the fixtures out there. We need to check the light levels and um, you know, make sure they're right for different streets. And, and with the control system, we're able to not only just set the whole, sh the whole you know, city at one level, we're able to put them in groups mm -hmm. and dim them differently, you know, maybe for a narrower street, a busier street, of something that has more uh, vehicular traffic rather than yeah. pedestrian traffic. So right. most of that was taken into consideration from the, um, from the consultants that we had on board. We had consultants mm -hmm. on board, um, very knowledgeable in, um, in the street lighting uh, field, Land Partners and uh, uh, Parsons Brinkerhoff. Okay. Um, and they went through the whole city, checked it for vehicular traffic, for pedestrian traffic, um, pole spacing, mm -hmm. street width. Um, with taking all that into consideration, we put and we put together three different fixtures. Okay. And the reason why we put them out there at 100% is because we still wanted the ability to raise the lighting. Mm -hmm. Not only you know cut the lighting down, we wanted the ability to raise it if needed for a short period of time, um, for a different time of year. Right. If uh, you know, you figure once the leaves fall off the trees, mm -hmm. it'll look different again. So yeah, that's you know, so, right. Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. So. How are we able to control, once we get it up and running and the control systems are working, how are you guys able to do that? Is that something you have to go and do like pole by pole or is there a control center somewhere? No, we have a, um, <clears throat> each fixture has a node on it which talks uh, to each other node and then back to a gateway. Okay. Um, and we've installed the gateways on seven different locations in the city on top of uh, for instance, on two firehouses and five schools. And the reason why we pick schools and firehouses is because of the height. Mm -hmm. You know, the schools are larger, the firehouses have the host towers. So. Right. so we're able to get the height so we can get the coverage. Okay. Um, and that's all built into our network. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's sent back to software, um, which we're able to view at the office. Mm -hmm. And from there, we can control fixtures, you know, on a daily basis. And we can not only control them, they also, um, they can generate work orders. So if a light is on all day, they call them day burners. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, I'm sure you've seen them. If you're out driving around, you see a light on, you say, what's that on? Yeah. We'll get a report saying that light's been on all day. Okay. Or if the light didn't come on, right. we'll get the report and mm -hmm. we'll be able to, Go out you know, and to fix send it. out, send the guys right out to fix them. Yeah. So speaking of the guys, you guys mm -hmm. have you know, your own crew too, and yeah. they're out there working with the, the contractor to help replace these lights. Yeah, what we've done is um, we've, we, we put a contract out, we hired a contractor mm -hmm. uh, to do the entire 4,800, um, but we, we separated per fixture. Mm -hmm. So we were able to do uh, repairs as we go. So okay. probably three months ago, we stopped purchasing the old type fixtures and the old type bulbs. Yeah. And, we, um, and as the guys go out there, we just send them out with a new LED fixture and we have them put it up. Okay. You, know, the, you, know, the, you know, the the guy's going there, the truck's being set up, he's right. going up. It's just as easy, it takes a little longer, but, yeah. you know, so we've moved along. We've probably done about um, about 70 replacements to date. 
Well, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. So this so, is not the only thing you guys do. You're no. a pretty busy department. Yes, we are. Yeah. So I want to yeah. move on a little bit. Mm -hmm. So when you guys do park renovations, I don't think people realize that the electrical department has such a big, you know, behind the scenes role. You guys are able to go in and do some work and help the contractors too, put in new equipment and stuff like that, right? Yeah, what we'll do, we don't do it on all the parks. Okay. Um, the larger projects uh, like the Cambridge Common, which is coming up, uh, mm -hmm. we won't have any part in that other than taking it over when it's finished. You know, okay. we, we'll pick it up once it's done, you know, we maintain it. But okay. on a lot of the smaller parks, we've worked with community development. Mm -hmm. And um, what we'll, they'll do is they'll, uh, they'll have the contract to do the infrastructure. Okay. Um, as we oversee it, we'll, you know, we'll show them where we want it. We'll do the design. Yeah. Not the design, but we'll do the layout for them after the design is done by community development. Right. And we'll, uh, we'll purchase all the material, mm -hmm. all the fixtures, all the wiring, and then we'll go in and we'll do, all the, we'll do the installation. Okay. And we've saved quite a bit of money doing it that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm sure residents are happy to hear about that. Yes. And lately we've been doing uh, the last three parts that we did. We, you know, we, we installed all LED. Mm -hmm. uh, the new pole, the same type of... Uh, the city spec pole for parks, so okay. and it worked out very well. That's awesome. So some of the other things you guys do behind the scenes that people aren't really sure about or don't really know about are a lot of the special events the city has. Yes. So like the dance party, mm -hmm. Danahy Park Family Day. Can you just tell me a little bit about those? Yeah, we're you know we're a big behind the scenes uh, department. Right. You know, but you think it, almost everything plugs in. Yeah. You know, so when you're, you know, Danahy Park Day, we'll make sure the stage has power. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we'll help out a couple of the other individual tables that need power mm -hmm. for a cotton candy machine, or for popcorn, you know, Gotta all kinds those. of stuff. Um, as far as any, you know, in any, any event, we're always called for PA systems. Mm -hmm. We're constantly running PA systems out to people, whether we lend it out because we have some battery operated PAs. Okay, cool. Or if, if it needs multiple mics and some sort of um, control, we send a you know we send a, a larger system up, set it up, take right. it down. Um, the uh, the River Fest, moving it over to Central Square. Yeah, that was a big feat and this was year. A, and that was yeah, that was a quick undertaking in a short time. We had a yeah. we had to supply power to a lot of areas. Worked out very well. That's good. Um, and of course, the dance party. I mean, yeah, that's that's, that's a, a spectacular event for the city. Yeah, it, it's really. Uh, it's really well attended and well run. Um, Mary Ellen does a, a very nice job at it in the she coordination does. over the years. But we, you know, we supply all the power to the lights. You know, you see the lights. You don't see the lights, but there's lights up on the roof. Mm -hmm. There's lights out front. You know, there's the amplifiers for sound. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything comes back to electricity, and we, you know, we try to supply for them. Right. So speaking of supplying, so you guys mainly, I know you do a lot of work with the city, but if a resident has a problem, can they contact you guys? Oh yes, I and mean, we depend on the we depend on the residents of the city to report, especially street lights out. Right. Um, you know, they everybody thinks someone else calls when there's a street lights out. You know, mm -hmm. or somebody else will take care of it. Yeah. Uh, we do have a uh, an email address which is uh, streetlightrepair at cambridgema.gov. Okay. Uh, that comes right to us. There's also the um, the city has an uh, an app, I Report. Oh yeah, which also has a street lighting section in that where you put your, you know, your inquire in whether it's a light not working, whether it's on all day, or whether anything. Yeah. To lighting, and it's sent back to us. We generate a work order, send the guys out, and had it fixed. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, that is so wonderful to hear. Thank you, Steve. I'm glad it's going well. I thank you for coming on the show. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have today, but you'll have to come back soon and let me know how it's going. Okay. I will, and all thank right. you for having me. Thanks for coming. Okay. So that is all the time we have for this edition of City View Inside. If you would like to find out more information on some of the topics we touched on, please check out the city's website at www.cambridgema.gov. For broadcast schedule information, you can check the 22 City View website at www.cambridgema.gov slash 22 City View. For the staff at 22 City View, I'm Liz Hatch. Good night and thanks for watching.